Hey guys, it's Captain Nabs here with you once again. So my first uh, walkthrough videos of FS Economy were a resounding success, so I thought I would walk you guys through another way to help get the most out of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And today we're going to take a walk through your first flight getting going in a VATSIM. How to get started and uh, how to get it all set up and get online for your first experience on VATSIM. So what is a VATSIM? Uh, VATSIM stands for the Virtual Air Traffic Simulation. It is a network, a worldwide network, created by a bunch of aviation enthusiasts that connect virtual pilots and virtual air traffic controllers from around the world. The biggest benefits to VATSIM are that you can see other aircraft being flown by real people moving around the simulator, and you can also receive air traffic control services from real people while you fly, instead of the heavily scripted and heavily unrealistic built-in ATC in Microsoft Flight Simulator. One of the most important things to always be aware of is that VATSIM is a no-cost organization. It is completely free to anyone who wants to join. All costs of running the infrastructure of the VATSIM network have always been paid for by donations, but there's absolutely no uh, subscription fee or any recurring fees uh, or even one-time fees to join. It's completely free to join, so you have nothing to lose by trying. So let's go ahead and uh, get you started in VATSIM, and uh, I think once you get started, you'll find that it adds a huge amount of realism to flying in any simulator, including Microsoft Flight Simulator. In order to log into the VATSIM network, the first thing you have to do is have an account. To do this, you can visit VATSIM.net or you can go directly to the personal account management page at my.vatsim.net, where you can then register your new account. And once you've registered, you can log into the same website and manage your account. And this is going to be important a little bit later on. So make sure you read through these points. There's not a whole lot of them here, but make sure you do read them. A couple of important ones. Uh, everyone will get a unique VATSIM ID number, and you have to uh, use this every time you log on. You will need to provide a valid email address. VATSIM will need an email address to be able to get a hold of you in case you need to do a password reset and also to validate and verify your account when you first sign up. You also have to be at least 13 years old or older in order to register and participate. It's a public network. Uh, there is some regulation, but it is mostly uh, unpoliced on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, most interactions are unpoliced, so uh, there is a minimum age requirement to join. There will also be an exam that you will have to uh, fill out uh, in order to become a full-fledged member of the network, but we'll get onto that in a little bit here. So you slide down here and you're going to have to fill out this registration form in order to become a member. You have to put down your full name. Once you're registered, you don't have to use your full name when you're logging into the VATSIM network. There are a few acceptable alternatives, such as just using your first name, but we'll talk about those later when we talk about connecting to the network. You will have to provide an email address so that they can send you confirmation verification information and also so they can contact you with information about the network. You won't usually receive too many emails from VATSIM but you will get a few here and there uh, when you, there are major changes such as infrastructure changes and things like that that happen. So once you've filled out most of your personal information you'll be asked at the end of the form here to select a region and a division. These regions and divisions don't really affect you too much as a pilot. These are basically where your home base will be if, at some point, you choose to try to become an air traffic controller in the VATSIM network. This is what the region and the division will be. As a pilot, you can fly anywhere in the world. However, as an air traffic controller, you're only trained in one particular region and you'll only be able to control in that one particular area. So if you think you might want to control somewhere in the future, select that region now. Most people usually opt for their home region, so I'm going to go ahead and select Canada in the Americas region. But uh, you can select anywhere in the world, you're not restricted to your local region, but it, this would be the place where you would uh, become an air traffic controller if you choose to in the future. You will have a couple of uh, documents to read here, the Code of Regulations, a Code of Conduct, and the User Agreement. These are all pretty straightforward. The Code of Regulations is probably the most obtuse, but it mostly has to deal with how the network is managed, uh, how the Board of Governors is elected, what their uh, duties are, etc. To the average user, there's not a whole lot in here that usually is particularly uh, important to be aware of. What is really important to the average user is the Code of Conduct. This is how to behave on the network, the rules that govern how uh, everyone interacts on the network. A lot of it is very common sense, no harassing people, um, 
you know, uh, be aware that you may be streamed at any point in time because it is a public network, um, not to spawn on runway thresholds, but to try and spawn uh, parking spots in airports and things like that. And then there's also a user agreement which just describes how you'll actually connect to the network and uh, what your obligations are and what the network's uh, VATSIM's obligations are. How about you read through the code of conduct for sure when you get a chance and the user agreement. Assuming that you've read them and you agree to them, then you can always hit register and you'll get an email shortly explaining how to finish your setup in the VATSIM network. So there we go, I've created a new account in the VATSIM network and you will get an email as well to verify your information. You won't be able to see my controller ID here because I'm going to block it out so you can't see it, but you'll get your own controller ID and password right here. Very soon after you become a member of VATSIM, you will receive this email here. It will contain again your VATSIM ID and your VATSIM password and it will also contain a verification button. This is of course your standard email verification just to make sure that you really do own this email. Make sure you do click it at some point to verify your account. So there we go, we now have successfully confirmed our email address here and we can now log into the VATSIM network or more specifically to the My VATSIM portal as indicated here. So now we're back to my.vatsim.net. Now we can hit log in. You'll put in your VATSIM ID, the automatic password you've been provided, hit sign in. And you'll see this authorization request. VATSIM is able to provide data to a lot of different organizations around the VATSIM network. Various airlines and ATC organizations around the VATSIM network can log in through the VATSIM sign-on. So for every website that you try to log in with your VATSIM ID, you will have to authorize that website for access to your information in the VATSIM database. So once you've logged in to your My VATSIM dashboard, you're going to see this notice pop up. This is a reminder that you haven't completed the new member orientation course. There's a very short course you have to take when you're a new member of VATSIM. It's about four pages long and then take a short exam to prove that you've taken the course. It's really not hard uh, and it just basically teaches you the most basic things about how VATSIM works, how to connect to it, and a little bit about how to fly in the VATSIM network, some of the most basic things you'll need to be aware of and learn in order to participate in VATSIM. So let's take a look at the course right now. As you can see here, it's offered right now in five different languages and there are other translations underway right now. It's just a matter of finding enough volunteers who are fluent in various languages to get some translations out there. We're going to take it in English and it really is a very short course. The first page is just an introduction there. So part one talks again about the rules and regulations regarding VATSIM, uh, a little bit about what simulators are supported, how you connect to the network, what call sign you should use when you connect to the network, and what supervisors are. Page two it's going to teach you a little bit about what is expected of you as a pilot and how to operate uh, VFR versus IFR, where to log on to the network. This is important to pay attention to guys. Uh, don't log on on a runway or a taxiway when you first connect to the network. Park yourself at some parking spot at the airport and connect to the network. You don't want to block someone by logging on on the runway just as they are landing right behind you. Uh, so always log on somewhere at a parking spot or somewhere way away from an airport in the middle of the airspace where you're very unlikely to be in anybody's way at the time teach you a few things about uh, how even to read an altimeter and uh, flight, how to file uh, flight plans, all sorts of uh, useful information and uh, it just provides a little bit of background information for you to build on. Page 3 will explain just how ATC works in the VATSIM network and how the top-down ATC works. Um, just because there's not a control tower up at the airport you're at doesn't mean you don't have ATC. If there's some other controller who is perhaps above the tower controlling, they'll also control everything below them. Uh, so read this page to understand a little bit more about that and also how to look up information about who's online and where. And we'll talk about that again in a little bit. There's even a little bit about how to talk on the radio properly, how to use your transponder to set a squawk code, which is important when you're flying in VATSIM and also a review of the phonetic alphabet, which you'll need to be very familiar with when you fly on VATSIM. And then last but not least is what to expect next and uh, how to uh, educate yourself a little bit more in the VATSIM network. So there's a whole learning center with a lot more information, but this is just the most basic new member orientation. So once you finish the course, 
and you spent enough time on it because there is a timer tracking you here. You have to spend a minimum amount of time in the course before you can take the exam. You can then go to the My Exam Center, which is linked on this fourth page of the course, to take your exam. It's a simple uh, multiple choice test with 15 questions. You have to get 80% or higher to pass and it's time limited to 15 minutes. However, it is an open book exam. You can have the course open in another window or in another tab in your browser while you're taking the exam to reference back to it. The point here is not to have you memorizing a lot of information, but just to make you aware of certain bits of information and make you aware that you can come back to this learning center at any point in time to, uh, to learn more or reread something that you've forgotten about. Once you're ready to take the exam, you go in here to the new member orientation test and click take. I'm not going to show you any of the questions here. There's a whole database of questions. You get a random assortment of 15 questions assigned. I'm just going to show you what it looks like when you finish. All right, guys, and I passed my exam on the first try there. I have successfully completed the new member course, which means that I can now connect to the VATSIM network. If you don't pass the test on the first time, guys, don't worry about it. You can retake the test. The point of the test is not to prevent you from getting onto the network, but just to make sure that you've read the new member materials before you log on for the first time. So now that we finished and successfully passed our test, we'll be allowed to log into the network. Now we can go and install the pilot client that we need to get our Microsoft Flight Simulator online. So we go under Resources, Pilot Clients, and you'll see that there are a number of different clients depending on what simulator you're using. If you use Prepared or FSX or Microsoft Flight Simulator, they all require a client called vPilot. If you use Xplane, there's a client called Xpilot. And if you're still using FS9, there is a pilot called Swift. There are some other alternatives to uh, vPilot if, uh, if you so choose, uh, but I recommend vPilot. It's fairly easy to understand and it is compatible with uh, most of the simulators that are not X-Plane. So let's go ahead and download vPilot. On the vPilot website, just click download, download the latest stable re release, whatever version it is, and you can install it. Windows may give you a warning when you try to run vPilot as long as you're downloading it directly from the vPilot website vPilot.metacraft.com you will have the correct valid client so you can go ahead and let Windows run it. Choose your options to install it where you want the shortcuts installed, where you'd like the files themselves installed and that's it. It installs very quickly and you can go ahead and launch vPilot. When you launch it, you're going to end up with a window that looks like this. This is the client, the program that will actually connect your simulator to the VATSIM network. Before you hit connect though, the most important thing is to go up here to settings and we're going to have to set up the client before we can get onto the network. So the first thing you're going to have to do is type in your VATSIM ID and your VATSIM password. For your full name, put whatever you want to be visible as your name on the network. You have a couple of choices here in the code of conduct. You can either put down your full name, you can put down your first name only, you can put down a nickname, or if you want to really remain anonymous on the network, you can even put down just your VATSIM ID. So you can copy your VATSIM ID again into that same field. Uh, it's up to you what you want to use. There has to be something in it, but it can be something as simple as just your VATSIM ID. I personally like to have my full name in there because it's a friendly place where I like to get to know people and I like them to get to know me. Your home airport is just again uh, something for fun. Put the nearest airport to where you live if you want people to kind of be aware of what part, what part of the world that you're from. If you're worried about privacy you can just make up something and put up anything you like in there. Then you're going to have to also select a VATSIM server. There are a number of different servers located around the world. They're named based on the area where they're located. Generally, the one that's closest to you geographically is probably going to be the fastest. So pick whatever is closest to your, to wherever you live in the world as your VATSIM server. The other big thing you're going to have to set up when you first start the vPilot client is your input and output audio devices. VATSIM is best 
experienced using a headset with a microphone and a mic. You don't have to have audio to use VATSIM. You can just use text, but it works much better if you're using audio. So you'll want to make sure you select your input device correctly and your output device correctly. Uh, this will have to be your microphone, this can be your headset speakers, this can be your desktop speakers, whatever you wish. And then you can also adjust the volume. What you'll notice down here is that there is a mic indicator down here at the bottom and it keeps going red, which means I actually have this set way too high. You should basically be able to talk and it never really goes into the red. Normally when you're talking it should be nicely in the green. If it's going into the red it's too high and you're going to come in as over modulated. So pay attention to this, test it out, just talk normally like you would talk on frequency and uh, try to adjust this slider so that when you're talking the bar ends up in the green. Blue is too quiet but red is too loud. The last thing you'll need to set up is a push-to-talk switch, or a PTT. A push-to-talk switch does exactly what the name says. You push the switch to talk on the radio. If you have a yoke or a joystick, you'll usually want to set a trigger button or something very close to your one of your fingers uh, on the joystick so that as you're flying, you can easily press and hold that button while you're flying to talk on the radio. If you don't have a joystick, you can use a button on the keyboard. Try to avoid other buttons that are serving another purpose. So usually things like control or alternate are good buttons to use as a push to talk on a keyboard. The rest of these settings we really don't need to worry about too much right now. So now that we've got it all set up, all we need to do is actually press the connect button. When you press the connect button, you get a very short dialog here that uh, allows you to specify the call sign and the type of aircraft when you log into the network. So as per the course that you took, the call sign can be an airline call sign. It can be a three letter airline code followed by a flight number like Air Canada 123 or maybe Southwest 456. Or it could be a registration of an aircraft. Usually it's a five letter code with uh, the starting, usually it's a five letter code. Uh, the first letter is determined by the country that the airplane is from. Or in America, it's usually a letter N followed by a bunch of numbers. The other thing you'll need is the type code. This is a four letter type code. You can't write out the whole word like Boeing 747. That's not how it works. However, what vpilot will also do for you is will search this list and show you the correct codes so for example boeing 747 there's a whole bunch of different models of boeing 747 you can pick the one that you have and it will put the correct code in there so for 747 400 you put b744 once you're happy with all of this you just have to hit connect now before we hit connect if I go back into the sim, you'll see that I have a big no-no going on here and that I am parked on a runway right now. Never connect to the VATSIM network when you're parked on a runway. Go to a gate or some near parking spot nearby. Alright, now as you can see, I've reset myself to a more appropriate position to log on to the network. I'm parked here at a gate. So now I just need to specify my call sign, make sure my type of aircraft is correct, and hit connect. Hopefully you'll see a couple of little messages here. If everything goes according to plan, you should see uh, welcome to the VATSIM network and you should hopefully see a couple of controllers pop on here on the left. All right, so now that we've successfully connected to the network, the last thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna ask uh, a nearby controller for a radio check. So over here are all the radio, are all the air traffic controllers within range of our radio make sure we have the correct frequency tuned in here which I've already done so so I typed in 121.900 like this and then I swapped it to the active channel which is the top channel and we just have to push and hold our press to talk switch while we're talking and as soon as we're done talking we let go of it Chicago Ground, Speedbird 123, radio check. 
Roger. Roger. What you'll also notice really quickly over here to make sure everything's working is these two little lights next to your frequency, TX and RX, for transmit and receive. Whenever you're transmitting, you're never you're holding your button in, this should be lit up. And whenever you're receiving from uh, any other controller or pilot, you should see the other button light up here, the receive button light up. And that's how, one of the ways that you can, again, check to see what's working. And if perhaps your volume is down, if you're not hearing anything, if you see this light up, but you're not hearing anything, volume might be down or there might be issues with your speaker because the messages are coming in, but they're, you're obviously not hearing them. So that's it, guys. That is my walkthrough of how to register for and log on to the VATSIM network for the first time. I'm going to have another video coming out in another uh, little bit that uh, details how to do your first flight around the VATSIM network, how to communicate with ATC, some of the things to look for and some of the things to say. But in the meantime, if you have any questions about anything you've seen here, please feel free to ask and go ahead and sign up and give it a try for yourself. Even if you just log on, get a radio check done and just listen to other people talking out there, uh, you'll learn a lot just from being connected to the VATSIM network to other people uh, who have uh, various experience in the flight sim world. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you guys all in the next video really soon.